Welcome back to my channel. I'm Trabin, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at the latest iteration of the Transformers franchise. Uh, this comic book is written by Daniel Warren Johnson, my current comic book crush, and uh, just released 2024. Let's talk about it. And while we're at it, let's look at my top three Transformer toys. I'm going to divide this review up into a couple of different parts. We're going to talk about, is this a good Transformers comic? And then we're going to talk about, is this a good Daniel Warren Johnson comic? Before we get into any of that, though, let's talk about uh, my number three favorite Transformer toy. Number three is kind of a cheat. So I've got Volcanicus here. Uh, which is the combiner form of all five of the Dinobots. So this is a character that existed in the comics briefly uh, for one issue, and then he was like a mindless killer, horrible amalgamation thing. And then for um, the Power of the Primes line, which is where these toys come from, they released a new version of him that is more a normal combiner. This was kind of the gimmick of the series. Now this one's a little bit of a cheat because these are five separate toys put together, but, uh, and I am missing one. That's why it comes in at number three. I don't have, I think, is it Snarl? I can't remember which one it is. The uh, Brachiosaurus or the Brontosaurus. The reason why I like this one in particular is because it's got five different robots. They all turn into uh, robots and turn into dinosaurs and then they also combine into the combined mode and limb swap so all the parts that can become arms can also be legs and the legs can become arms so it's got a lot of replayability and that's really important when it comes to these toys let's talk about the comic and whether or not i think that it is a strong transformers comic so as a Transformers fan, starting with the original series in the 1980s, uh, watched Prime, I watched Beast Wars. I know quite a bit of the lore and quite a bit of the characters. Going into this one, I didn't know what to expect, but it really does strike me as something akin to X-Men 97, or at least what I've been hearing from X-Men 97, in that it is a series that is paying homage to the original while also maturing with its fan base. So essentially what you have in Transformers Volume 1 is the beginning of the uh, classic 1980s series with a couple of changes, a little bit more realism. So when you're talking about giant robots des destroying each other, fighting over resources and attacking power plants and things like that, there's bound to be some collateral damage, some deaths in the, cro in the crossfire. And this deals with that very realistically, I would say. Um, but also, again, because it's a Daniel Warren Johnson title, it can be a little bit over the top and be a little bit, almost feel a little bit exploitative. A lot of what Daniel Warren Johnson writes tends to be like post-apocalyptic or very like, um, what, I, what we would say metal um stories i feel like there were points where the violence and the gleeful um depictions of that violence were taking me out of the story i do like the characterization of prime and of the principal cast i do get a sense of their different feelings and their different ideas uh, starting off this story, I do feel like the human characters were given enough to do to make them important to the story and give them agency. But a lot of the overall theming or the overall messaging of this is just how frail and weak humanity would be against a threat of giant transforming robots. And so it has to balance those two and it doesn't always work, but it's certainly trying. I would say if you are a fan of Transformers and if you are looking for something a little bit darker, something a little bit grittier, because again, that is uh, 
Daniel Warren Johnson's style, this is probably going to work for you. If you enjoy the nostalgia of Transformers as like purely a uh, basically a uh, toy commercial or for its kind of 80s vibe, I don't think you're going to get as much of that in here. The art style and the uh, violence that is in this comic does make it feel tonally separate from the original Transformers. So depending on what you're willing to um, you're willing to accept and willing to put up with, um, and depending on what you're looking for in a modern day Transformers iteration, this may or may not work out for you. For me personally, I enjoyed it. I liked it for what it was. I knew going in, the writer, I knew going in, I'd seen some screenshots and some things. I knew that it was going to have, like, uh, there's one point in here where Optimus Prime, like, is injured his arm is pretty much useless so he like rips it off and uses it as a club to bludgeon other uh bludgeon the decepticons if that sounds over the top and ridiculous to you then i'd avoid this if it feels like that's kind of what you're looking for like a bleaker more extreme version of transformers uh og transformers then i'd pick this up let's go on to my number two Transformer. This is Deathsaurus. Uh, he is a transforming monster, basically. Uh, this was a Hasbro Pulse, uh, like, backed thing. So, um, the cool thing about this is not only is it a Transformer, like, it transforms into a, a giant griffin looking monster, but it also has these kind of like uh, sound wave or um, blasters, tapes, where you can transform these into rectangles and they go into his uh, chest plate here. So again, replayability, the, the playability of this, the fun you can have with this is really high. And it also came with this throne, which is very nice, uh, you know, shelf presence when you put it up on uh, the collection, it definitely stands out. So my number two favorite is Deathsaurus. Now I've got it in my hand, I can't help but fidget with it. Let's talk about Transformers as a Daniel Warren Johnson comic. Where would I put it in terms of the other comics I've read from him? So just for context, at the uh, as of filming for this video, I've read through Do a Powerbomb, Murder Falcon, I've read his Wonder Woman one shot and the Beta Ray Bill one shot. And among those, I would probably put Transformers uh, for a Daniel Warren Johnson comic. I'd put it above Wonder Woman and Beta Ray Bill, but below Murder Falcon or Do a Powerbomb, which I think is his strongest work. And the reason why is because I feel like with Do a Powerbomb and Murder Falcon, he is working with his own content. He's working with his own characters. He's working with his own story. He's able to tell exactly the story that he wants to. And here, he's still restrained a bit by the uh, the characters that he's dealing with and the franchise that he's dealing with. We have reflections on you know, meditations on war, uh, meditations on... Uh, mortality, um, on frailty, and I do feel like he is doing his best with what he has to create these moments of high drama and high tension that you see in his other work. It's just not coming across as strongly because we're still dealing with a franchise with a very long and storied history. You're still bringing in your emotions and your attachments to these characters from other media possibly and i do feel like at times it didn't quite work for me even though we're trying to insert this um this narrative of like high stakes and sacrifice and we're trying to make the characters make the story more realistic make the stakes higher, make the, um, 
you know, up the emotion, up the pathos of the story, sometimes it didn't work for me. Sometimes it took me out of it. As a Daniel Warren Johnson comic, uh, even as a fan of his work, I still would put this somewhere middle of the road for his works overall. A middle of the road Daniel Warren Johnson comic is still you know, head and shoulders above most other comics for me. Before we get into um, the overall rating... We still have to do my number one favorite Transformer. Bring back up Death Saurus because I did Transformers guy into a little thing. So just snap it in here. Woo. Becomes a chest plate. Kind of. Uh, it kind of fell a little bit far in there, but uh, you get it. You get it. Number one Transformer and one that's already made an appearance on my channel before is Trypticon. Whoa, okay. Uh, Trypticon was a gift, uh, Christmas gift one year from one of my best friends. Uh, he is absolutely gigantic. So as I mentioned with Deathsaurus, that shelf presence that you want from your toys is uh, very high with him. He is a triple changer, so he can change from this giant dinosaur into a ship and into a station. This one also has a gimmick where um, you can put smaller uh, transformers down his mouth and they end up in his stomach and you can open up here and get them out. So a lot of gimmicks, a lot of, a lot of fun to be had with this. And again, just like him being massive on the shelf, uh, I sometimes refer to Trypticon as uh, one of my children, my, my third child. He's so massive and so cool. And, uh, you know, you can have him grab smaller Transformers or put them in his mouth. So he's just great. Let's talk personal rating for Transformers Volume 1. For me, this is going to be a 5 out of 5. But I can understand some... Uh, of the criticisms that have been levied against it. Combining one of my favorite childhood franchises with one of my current uh, favorite writers and artists in the comic book industry was almost going to guarantee that this was going to score very high. I actually like the direction that the story is taking with showing the Decepticons, you know, committing murder and being very evil and being very threatening. Um, but I can understand those who wouldn't appreciate that. And I myself have felt like certain titles in the past, such as Kamen Rider Amazons, are just using violence as a way to model themselves as mature when they don't have the story to support that. I do feel like this is trying to have the mature storytelling as well to go along with it. Yes, it did not always hit for me. It didn't always work for me. But the overall package of like reliving that nostalgia from my childhood, seeing the characters, seeing the setup again, um, and then also having reflections on what war is like and what the what a fight against giant transforming robots would actually look like uh, was something that I was very invested in and was very entertained by. This flew by for me, uh, a very quick read. And so, again, I don't know if I'd recommend it to all Transformers fans. I don't think I'd recommend it to all Daniel Warren Johnson fans. But if you're in that... Um, if you're in that zone where you're looking for something a little bit grittier, you know Daniel Warren Johnson's style, you know this is going to be a little bit bleaker of a Transformers interpretation, and you're okay with that, then I think you're going to enjoy the book a lot. My understanding is uh, this comic book run coming out from Image has two other titles going along with it that are going to be creating a shared universe. So there is Void Rivals, which is another transformers based storyline and there's also a modern day gi joe being released and again it's my understanding that this is a shared universe so we're going to have like crossover stories and things like that i picked up the free comic book day comic for the transformers and it had all three in it and honestly the void rivals and the gi joe excerpt they had in that free comic book day uh volume were more interesting than the Transformers section they had. So I can only imagine that they are just as strong titles. Um, 
So if this is something that you're interested in, you pick it up, you like it, know there are two other titles you might want to look into to get a full story or to expand on this universe. Thank you for joining me on another review. I hope your reading journey is going well. I hope you are finding things that are uh, mixing elements that you want in the ways that you want them and are creating uh, exciting titles for you to consume. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe so we can grow this corner of our BookTube community. And until the next one, take care.